address this concept quickly. If anyone in this room is looking for an instructor, a drill instructor, a sergeant or lieutenant to get you through this academy, get up and get out now. It's not going to happen. I'm not here to get you through the academy. That's not my function. It's not my job. My job is to place obstacles in front of you. It's your job to develop a process and how to get through those obstacles and move forward. My job is to make things uncomfortable. Uncomfort, discomfort promotes change, promotes better habits. From there, it's up to you whether you develop the self-discipline to sustain those habits moving forward. Make sense? Yes, yes sir. sir. If you're looking from the outside, for outside factors to get you through this academy, do not come back on the 8th. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Good afternoon. Welcome to another edition of Fido Talk with Dave Thompson. Today is an interesting episode, and it has to do with resiliency. It has to do with being resilient, taking on challenges. So without further ado, let's go ahead and, and get started. From my perspective and from where I work, the trend lately has been quitting, just up and quitting, no, um, no signs of being resilient, no signs of sticking it out, no signs of seeking out help, no signs of any type of wanting to develop and improve. And that's just on an individual level. What I'd like to do today is, is kind of break this down a little bit and talk about where, where leadership comes in on situations like that or in this subject as a whole as far as developing resiliency within individuals, within the team, within the entire organization. How do we do that? Um, what are some approaches? What responsibility does the individual have so like I said where in my career and where I work there has been just a rash of you know fuck this you know this isn't for me I'm gone and that's you know that's all well and good not every industry not every career path is going to be for everybody and that that's fine there's there's nothing wrong with that on its surface there's nothing wrong with that at all from a leadership perspective from in my opinion from from my point of view it, it it's it starts with the vetting process right it starts with the HR, the personnel, the, the, the process of selecting individuals to be part of an organization, be part of a team. When your standards match your mission statement, they have to be rigid. They have to be almost non-negotiable. You have to meet a mark. You have to meet a standard. You have to be someone who's going to be a productive member of the team. When you lower the standard but keep the expectation of fulfilling the mission statement the same, you, you're creating a gap that, that can't be filled with May, you know, maybes, what ifs, maybe they'll, it'll work out, um, well, we'll see, and, and whatever, you know, human resource band-aid you want to throw on it. Uh, the vetting system has to be there. People have to meet a certain standard. They, it's, especially when you're talking about some critical career paths, 
some, you know, first responder, anything within the first responder realm, it, it's it's imperative that you you do that. Um, if you're the top dog, the leader, ask yourself this question. Would you go to a dentist or a doctor that has had the standards dropped and he's just getting by because somebody's pushing him through? Like, are we doing that? Are we entrusting uh, your medical or dental care or, God forbid, your family's care into somebody like that? If not, why is that good enough for your own organization? Why is that good enough for the people who already have been vetted and met higher standards? Like, what are you projecting towards them and the rest of the team? That that's all they're worth? Like, their worth is now the lowest common denominator, the lowest standard. That's what the organization is worth. That's really something to consider when you are you decide to lower the standards and just for number's sake or to appease um, the masses or whatever easy out you're looking for. If we start doing that and start giving passes and not creating obstacles, not evaluating people, not putting in the work to make sure the process, a process is in place where people can grow and develop. And the only way we're going to grow and develop is through lessons, hard lessons. That's the only way you're going to sustainably create and develop a a workforce that is stable they feel safe secure they can develop good professional relationships and then the full potential can be met that that end game that mission statement and that goes all the way down to the frontline leaders you hear a lot of especially in my profession oh this new kid he sucks okay so what are we doing are we calling him in and just pointing out all his mistakes? Yeah, yeah, that's what we're doing. He sucks. You're not doing A, B, and C. Okay, cool. Are we then remediating that? Are we documenting it? Are we counseling him? Are we creating a, a plan of action for him to follow? Are we going to try to develop a a skill set? Are we re- reinforcing the things that he does well and emphasizing let's sustain and maintain those good points and those good qualities. While we're doing that, let's maintain or or improve on these areas. And this is how we're going to do it. And from a leadership perspective, here are my, here's my responsibility. This is what I'm going to do for you. Are we then following up with it? Are are we are we ourselves as influential team members, as frontline leaders, mid mid level leaders, uh, leaders, excuse me, and top level, the top dogs? Are we putting in the work? I think that's a fair question. Are we putting in the extra work to grow and develop at a professional level? professional development are, are we are we emphasizing that are we giving the new guys and even for lack of a better term the shitbag people who've been been on the team in the organization for 20 something years are we are we putting in the work to to correct this corrective action are, you know are we doing that i think those are very fair questions and if not are we just looking for the easy way out? In larger organizations, as a front or middle, mid-level leaders or managers, bosses, in the case that where where I work, um, it's it's easy to kind of blend into the weeds, right? To get lost in the layers, to play the cover your ass game, to you know deflect 
deflect and blame, cover your ass, and 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 kind of maneuver and and screw the pooch around what you need to do, and instead of getting down to it and putting the extra effort in the name of the team, it's. Um, it certainly is a me first type of approach and that in itself is going to be terribly ineffective to fulfill any mission statement. It, it doesn't matter what it is or what you're, you're trying to accomplish, whatever goal you're trying to accomplish. It does all come back to the mission first, the mission statement, the organizational goal has to be first and foremost the team. You have to take care of the team. And we're not talking about perks and, and, you know, handouts and all that other happy bullshit that that's really just a Band-Aid, right? It's fake. What's sustainable and will help people in the long run is professional development, is setting a good example, developing professional relationships, training, good training is setting the example of being at the top of whatever profession that you happen to be in, developing that sense of pride as an individual, as a team member, as a whole organization. That is where it's at when it comes to developing teams. Those developed teams will take care of the mission. It will it will get easier for you. In my opinion, coming into a an industry that is inherently high pressure, it it, it comes with risks, inherent risks of its own, and maintaining or being oblivious to a shitty work environment or a shitty climate or having bosses instead of leaders is only going to perpetuate more and more quitters. It's that whole quitter victim mentality. This job sucks. Nobody's helping me. Uh, I'm alone, I'm this, I'm A, I'm B, I'm C, I'm, uh, woe is me, fuck this, I'm gone. And that's what we're seeing at an alarming rate, an alarming rate. And that helps nobody. It absolutely helps no one. What's the answer? There's a ton of ways to skin a cat. There's a ton of ways to develop a mission. There's a ton of ways to put the mission first and foremost. And every organization, every team is going to have completely different variables. So there's no plug and play. There's no template that you can just plug in the info and it'll shit out the answer for you. There has to be work put in. There has to be. Give some responsibility to people. Decentralize command. Let as, as a top dog leader, let, let the people know what your intent is. Give them a chance to develop a plan. Give them a timeline. Go over the plan. And then hold them accountable to that plan. Evaluate the plan. Do whatever you need to do to tweak it and to move on with it. But let them own it. Patton said it best. General Patton said it absolute best. Give somebody something to do and let them surprise you with their creativity in getting it done. Develop the teams. Develop the individuals. Give them a chance. Give them the resources to build their skill set. To develop some resiliency to problems some reflexive and critical thinking. Let them do it. Otherwise, especially in the first responder field, 
they're going to be taking orders from the wrong side. The in the, the medical field will be the patients calling the shots, right? And and it'll be the criminals calling the shots on the street. It'll be the the criminals and the the inmates calling the shots on the inside. It, you know, it'll be there will be no command and control, and that's the right road that the first responder field is heading down right now. This also can be applied in any private industry, any several people I've talked to in the private sector in in different companies, and and that's the way it's headed. There's no resiliency building. There's no professional development. There's no accountability. Let's ask ask ourselves if if we do like legitimately consider ourselves legitimate leaders, people who have some influence, people who are take pride in setting a good example. Are you doing enough? Are you legitimately putting in the effort, or are you a fucking fraud? Right? Are you are you there to collect the perks, make the money, screw the pooch, get over, and do whatever you need to do? I think those are some some fair questions to ask. And at the end of the day, at the end of my career or your career or whoever's listening, at the end of your career, is all this really going to change? Ah, eh, I don't know. Probably not. If one a couple, a handful of, of people get something out of it. And this is just a personal, you know, Dave Thompson perspective. If one or two people get something out of it from my example or any advice they may seek out from me, then in my opinion, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Just something to think about, guys. A, a little rant that has been... Um, this kind of subject has has caught me a little bit left lately, uh, a little bit gruff this this episode, but um, I appreciate you guys listening. So do me a favor, head over to the YouTube channel, subscribe, like, comment, um, head over to Instagram, Facebook, all the all the support, the followers are growing, and I I appreciate it, I really do. Give me a review on Spotify, if you would, Apple, Apple Podcast. Um, again, I can't thank you guys enough for your support. I, I look at the, the views and the followers and think, Jesus, if I was presenting to 170 people, that would be pretty, pretty amazing. So, um, again, thank you. And check out. Or stand by for the next episode and the next YouTube video coming up. I appreciate it. And always, keep kicking those fucking doors in. Fido, thanks for listening. I want to thank everyone for listening to this week's episode of Fido Talk with Dave Thompson. If you would, please subscribe and review. It helps a lot. Uh, Share the word with your friends and family. Have them check it out and provide some feedback. We'd love to hear it. Check us out at barebonesleadership.com for the latest blog and different perspectives on everything leadership. Follow us on the gram and on our newly updated Facebook page. Uh, Share your comments, your thoughts, your views. Any and all feedback is always welcome. And don't forget... Keep kicking those fucking doors in, and as always, Fido. I appreciate you guys listening. Take care, and see you next time.